So what's in the tin? Just an obscure tin out in my room here. I wonder what's in it. Let's have a look. It's certainly an odd assortment, isn't it? Do you ever collect things and you think, well, I don't want to throw that out, but what's the good of it anyway? Anyway, we're just going to have a look at some of this stuff and see what's in here. This is one of those tin pools of curios. Whoops, so here's a closer look. Let's just pick it apart bit by bit. <coughs> here's something quite curious. Trans-Australian Railways, communication system October 1989. Way back in the day. <coughs> 1989 to be precise, I was working in Telecom Australia, now Telstra's public relations section. And um, there was a project of taking coaxial cable across the Nullador, Nullarbor Plain, to, um, which was a very momentous thing at the time. And um, I remember working with the ABC's Behind the News program for school kids on this project. And uh, it was very satisfying. And that's a memento, a little paperweight. And in there is a picture that's all coaxial cable that you can see inside, in, inserted in there. You just put it up that way, you can see the coaxial cable there. Pretty interesting bit of trivia or souvenir. What else have we got here? There we are, magnetic tape. My first ever tape recorder was one of these um, a, a national three and three quarter inch per second or whatever it was, taking these little um, two inch reels. And uh, I used to uh, have a great lot of fun with my little national um, tape recorder and recorded lots of pop songs on the day and then of course graduated to bigger tape recorders with bigger reels five and three quarter inch uh, sorry five inch reels I think and then up to seven inch reels so there you go that's a nice one I'm not even sure what's on there we've got our wedding actually on one of these uh, tapes what do we got here this one hasn't been opened but that's a uh, that's that hasn't been opened ever that's a standard eight movie film canister it's got a movie film in it that we used on the old standard eight uh, movie cameras which you used to um, uh, of course used to put them in the camera and then halfway through you'd have to you know darken space take take it out turn it over a bit like a tape recorder and play it back in the other direction and then when they processed the tape the um, films they would cut them down the middle and you got a about a three and a half three and a half minute um, movie out of that that was that one what else have we got There's a number of these. These are the little uh, flash cubes that we used to get on our Kodak Instamatics. And all of these are okay. I could still put them on an Instamatic today and they would fire off. I've got three of those. And you've got four flashes per, per unit. So between those three there, I've got three flashes that I could put on a Kodak Instamatic camera if I could put some film in it and take a photo using the flash. There you go. Valuable. <laughs> um, what's this? This is a a 120mm film, never been processed. This has a... It says developed before June the 1st, 1919. Look at that. Developed before June the 1st, 1919. Um, not quite sure what it is. What's it say? It's an Eastman Kodak film, and it could be similar to this one here. This is the same film, the same used by date. Um, that one's still partly in its wrapping, hasn't come out yet. So I'm not quite sure what they are. I would say they're black and white, going back that far. I could probably should, should put them in a camera one day and see if they work. This one here is a bit similar to that, Kodak Vero, Verochrome Pan 120 film, I think it's 120, no it's 620, that's a 620 film, there you go. Uh, that would fit in some of the cameras, you can't get this film anymore. That size, I could probably put that in one of my cameras. And what's the use by date, this is May 1970, is the use by date on that. Kodak Blue Bulbs recommended for flash, Kodak Veropone 
Verichrome Pan Film uh, VP620, so I'm presuming that that's panchromatic. Oh no, it's black and white film. It says black and white on the on there. So there you go. That's another collector's item. One something that I could still use. Um, this one here is even more curious. This is a uh, Kodak. Kodak Pantomic X film and uh, don't know what the use by date on that one is oh no here it is May May 1952 that's the use by date on that one and that was a uh, tropical packing packed for the tropics and this is a very tiny little film look at that I don't think that's ever been used either it's got a rubber band holding it on there that's a Pantomic X, extra fine, and that is a, um, what's it, FX828 film, 28 by 40 millimeter film, eight exposures on that, it says, eight exposures. There you go, look at that, how interesting, very tiny, that one, it's probably about, or oh, just over an inch, just over an inch long that uh, film is there. So there's certainly some curios here. This one here looks like a... Uh, this one's been exposed. 35mm, a metal, all metal case. I don't know what it's got inside of it. There you go, very interesting. What else? A familiar metal canister for a 35mm film, I presume. There you go, it's all wound up. This hasn't been used. It's a Kodak artificial light Kodachrome. Look at that. 135 film. Um, 20 exposures it's got on that one. Used to be able to get 12, 20 and 36 exposures back in the day of uh, slide films. <coughs> this one's for artificial light, K135A, artificial artificial light. So possibly could still be used, but I don't know how you get that processed. Uh, let's just put this back in here. Put that in there. Here's a, a box of Agfa. I haven't even opened that. Agfa Isopan IF 13536 film. That's never been used. 36 shots on that one, I think. Used by date on that one is the 2nd of August, I think, 1955 on that one. So that goes back a little while too. 100 ASA or 21 DIN. 100 ISO these days, of course. So that's possibly a um, made in Germany safety film. Pancro something or other. Not sure whether that's colour. It's probably black and white. I don't know. Anyway, another curio. So you can see why I'm reluctant to chuck some of these things out. What's this one? Break this one open. Here's another one of these metal containers here. This once again is a Pantomic X 36 exposure. Eastman Kodak, Rochester, New York. Made in the United States of America. And I can't tell you what that is. Just a pant, just 36 exposure. There you go. Look at that one. Fascinating, these old films. Quite a strong metal uh, cassette, that is. That's that one. Getting a bit closer to home now. This one here is a 
focal colour slide film, 35mm. We used to be able to get these from the Kmart in Adelaide. And this is a slide film, 36 exposures, IS, ISO 100. They were actually calling it ISO back then, not ASA. So that's a relatively modern one. That would be exposed, so I need to probably send that in and get it printed. Interesting. What else have we got going? This one here is a Chem Mart from The Chemist. It's a Chem Mart 100, Super SR100 colour color print film. There you go, look at that one. I'd say that's been exposed too. And uh, process CNK4, C41. For best results, return to your Chem Mart pharmacy for processing. There you go. Here's one that you'd get from the chemist. Probably a, a cheap film, but worked quite well. Getting a bit more modern now. Oh, no, we aren't, because that's a box, but there's nothing in it. Ilford XP2 400, uh, one of my favourite black and white films, which can be processed in colour um, processing, and also has a, uh, a really great exposure latitude in today's terminology. Look at this, a little earphone probably for some obscure little device where I either listen to the radio or it might have been for some other tape recorder or something, I'm not sure. But that's an unusual little, um, on the end there, that little uh, plug is a bit different to the sizes of things we see these days. And now this is the most interesting thing in the whole lot. Don't know whether you've ever seen one of these. You just rotate it around slowly. I'll tell you the story behind it. This is a, a little um, ceramic jar. It's quite small. And uh, Holloway's ointment. And uh, for the treatment of all sorts of things. Inveterate, uh, inveterate ulcers, chillblains, chapped hands, insect bites. Um, boils, bad legs, <laughs> and uh, wounds, burns, cuts, and bruises manufactured uh, only by the proprietor. Trademark. And if you look these things up on the internet, you'll find that over the years there's all sorts of different ones been made of these ointments, and quite often they have a um, they have a person sitting on the throne there, but they have quite often different uh, variations of it. At one stage they had a, a lady there sitting there with a, a bare breast, and um, so they took that one off the market because it wasn't deemed appropriate. Of course, of course it wasn't. So anyway, there you are, that's Holloway's. And now, the, how I came by that, many years ago, probably 30, 40 years ago, I was walking down one of our local beaches, and that washed up on the sand. It was washed up on the sand and my uh, guess is that it came off an old sailing ship when Australia was first settled. It, the people came here in sailing ships and this is back you know back in that era when these things were popular. If you look at some of the old, uh, if you look these up on the internet you'll find out all about the history of these things. But that to me was a real treasure. It's, it's a beautiful little um, ceramic bowl and uh, quite well made, still in good condition. And I couldn't believe it when I picked that up. So there you go. That's what's in the tin. I hope you found that interesting. A bit of trivia. But uh, as you probably know, I'm a bit of a hoarder. And I don't quite know what to do with all that stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.